Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Super Micro CSE217 and specifically the motherboards inside the X9DRT-F and the X9DRT-HF. Let's get started. Hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Super Micro X9 DRT family of motherboards. Uh, do us a favor, if you find anything in today's video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, so let's get rolling. Uh, for uh, First things first, uh, this chassis, uh, we'll show you when we flip it around, but it has four uh, blades in the back. Um, and each one of those blades is what we will be kind of narrowing down per blade. But of course, you can actually put four in there, which is a, a you know, nice, convenient feature. Um, within the blade, there are uh, two CPUs inside. Uh, they're an LGA 2011 socket, which means that they take Intel Xeon E5 2600V1 or V2 series CPUs. Uh, there's a couple of good ones that we recommend. Um, personally, the V2s have gotten pretty cheap nowadays, so you can get them at a, at a good price point. So I'm a big fan of like the E5 2660 uh, V2, the E5 2670 V2. Um, and if you want to go all the way you know, up uh, pretty high, you can get an E5 2690 V2. It's going to be a little bit more expensive, but uh, you get a nice boost in performance there overall. Uh, so that would be our recommendation as far as CPUs are concerned. Uh, regarding the RAM, uh, there's a uh, number of different um, uh, sizes that you can use. You can go as low as uh, 2 gig, 4 gig, 8 gig, uh, 16 gig, 32 gig, or all the way up to a 64 gig. But with the 64 gigs, there's a key that we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Uh, and as far as the uh, the size is concerned, I'm sorry, the, uh, the speeds are concerned, you can do uh, 1066, 1333, 1600, or up to 1866. So the key that we were talking about for the 64 gigs is you can only do 64 gigs with load reduced memory, which means there's two types of memory that you can use for this machine, ECC register known as an RDIM or load reduced known as an LRDIM. With an LRDIM, the max you can do is 512 gigabytes, which is the big advantage. You can put 864 gigs at 1600 megahertz, uh, whereas with the ECC register, you can get 832 gigs, and that only is going to get you up to 256 gigabyte, which is still really nice, but not as uh, good as the, uh, the LRDIM. So um, again, uh, you know, to each your own, you can go either way. Both are a good solution, but personally, I always say, uh, you know, grab LRDIMs. Um, even if you're only buying 32 gigs, uh, who knows, in the future, you might want to upgrade uh, and you might want to be able to use uh, you know four 32 gigs and 464 gigs or something like that and you can reuse some of your memory uh, but as soon as you try to mix them you can't mix them so uh, that's one of the things I always talk about for scalability if you're trying to max it out um, and you're getting 32 gigs and 60, uh, 64 gigs go LRDIM so anyhow all right we're gonna open it up uh, I want to show you a little bit more about how to pull the blades out uh, how to actually um, uh, uh, install the RAM, pay attention to all the channels. Uh, but before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. You really never want to be inside your machine without some sort of protection, so I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Now, I'm going to show you this first way, and it's not my favorite way, uh, but it, it, it is a way. My, my problem with going through the top is, uh, simply put, um, you can only access the two blades on top. So. Is it a solution? Sure, you can do it, why not? Um, is it the best solution? I mean, really, no. Uh, you don't need to get a screwdriver out and do what I'm doing right now. You can simply pull the blades out of the back, um, and to me, that's the uh, the best way to do it. But I wanted to show you all options, and this also, when you pop the top off, will give you access to a couple other things um, that you won't be able to get when you pull the blades out of the back, such as the fans, in the back plane. So if there was a reason that you needed to get into there, uh, you'd be able to do it. So that's the first way. Uh, now I'm going to show you the way that I actually think you should do this and most people will be working on it. Now this is the way that I would recommend is from the back side. It's a little bit easier. So uh, you'll see there are two tabs under the hooks here. You're going to want to push those two tabs and then pull the two latches. So there's two tabs and then pull the two latches. And as soon as you do it just slides right out. There's no cabling on the inside so you don't need to worry and it'll just keep on sliding right out. It will eventually become dead weight so you need to have a hand under it. But you can see right here that this just you know plugs back in when you go in. So now I'm going to show you how to work on it. Alright so we've set it up to make it easy to work on. So uh, first things first we discussed that there are eight dim slots. Well you'll notice you, you can't access the other eight uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Hey, get your trusty screwdriver back out. Um, so right here is the, uh, the first screw. You're just going to want to simply unscrew it. And then here's your second screw. Inside. 
inside my air baffle so I don't lose them. All right, now that we're in, you will notice uh, there are two CPUs as we discussed. Uh, CPU 1 controls these four DIMM slots. CPU 2 controls these four DIMM slots. Uh, the, the, the nice thing about this machine is that each uh, slot is actually its own memory channel. So it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So literally each, uh, each slot is its own channel. So that's pretty cool. Um, and we're going to go ahead and um, drop in 864 gigs. We have some uh, Samsung 64 gigs that we just got in. So if you need any, let us know. Um, first thing I would like to note is a couple things I like to, which I've already done, I like to pop all my tabs open. Um, personally, I just don't want to be fumbling around. It's a tip that I always tell people so that you don't accidentally drop a module. Or if the tab's up, I guess it can actually prevent you from installing uh, the module and then you're, uh, you know, potentially could chip a corner or just like silly things like that so just I just make sure all of the tabs are open the second thing is if you look right here there's this notch known as a key right in the middle of the module and actually that's the I shouldn't call it right in the middle because that's the main point here is it's not perfectly centered uh, and because of that you have to make sure you align it properly if I were to try to install it like this I could actually uh, damage the leads or potentially damage the dim slot so you need to make sure you align it properly so I'm going to install it in the A channel over here and actually because it flip flopped and I <laughs> did it wrong so you need to install it in the A channel the correct way uh, and make sure it's aligned properly and you're gonna hear these two clicks one two and that's how you know you physically got it seated because that's a common problem uh, where I'll, I'll take a module uh, and I'll put it in like that and you'll, you'll see it, it looks like it's installed um, people think that, that, that uh, they have a failed module and most of the time it's just not properly seated it's a real common uh, user error that we always tell the people so just make sure you have everything properly seated and then now this way is actually where it was uh, facing the different direction um, so we're going to come back over here so this is C and then we're going to put it into D so now we've uh, filled up the first four channels for CPU 1 okay uh, so just like that it uh, didn't take much time at all and we have dropped in uh, 464 gigs but now we want to go all the way up uh, so we're going to come back uh, and this is technically uh, the first channel over here on this side so we're going to hit E lined up just simple little tricks as you can see as a, at the start of when I did this it's real easy to put it the wrong way so if you ever feel any resistance it's always good to just double check to make sure that you got it in properly because it might uh, be facing the wrong way it's real easy to do I tell people I don't care if you've been doing it 20 years or your first day on the job it's a easy mistake unfortunately so okay so the next thing I like to tell uh, tell everyone it's a good tip uh, because of the um, the module sometimes not getting fully seated and it being just such a common issue all the time, I always tell people double check all your tabs. Okay, just make sure while you're in here all the tabs are closed. And yep, they're all good because if they're not, uh, you'll end up one of them won't register and then you have to go back through and pull everything back out uh, and figure out what's going on. Uh, so just check in now, taking an extra second is always smart in my opinion. All right, so just like that, it only took uh, a few seconds. It was nice and easy and convenient. Um, what you want to do now is just simply put the air baffle on, make sure you put both screws in, and then put the blade back in and call it a day. So uh, appreciate you guys stopping by. Hey, if you made it this far in the video, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you need any upgrades for your blade, uh, please email us at sales at cloudengines.com. That's sales at cloudengines.com. We got a ton of 64 gigs, 16 and 32 gigs for that matter as well. So if you need any upgrades, hey, we'd love to help you out. Have a great day.